In order to make precise cuts with your table saw, you have to align it and adjust it precisely. Makes sense. It's a straightforward but exacting procedure that I'm going to show you on this historically significant table saw. You're looking at the very beginning of the stationary electric power tool industry. The Delta Specialty Company, as it was called back then, introduced this table saw, their very first table saw, in 1928. A year later, they added this tiny little jointer on the same stand. This was the beginning of Delta's gray line tools. This particular saw and jointer was built in 1935 and sold to the Miami Wood Specialty Company of Dayton, Ohio, which manufactured several wooden toys designed by Orville Wright, who, along with his brother Wilbur, had invented the first successful airplane in 1903. Lauren Wright, another one of Orville's brothers, was the president and part owner of Miami Wood Specialty. Orville often helped Orville out by designing jigs, tools, and toys. Among these toys was a balsa wood glider. This balsa wood glider. The company made over 1.5 million of them that year. And here's the history I promised you. This table saw was used to make the last airplane ever designed by one of the Wright brothers. Too cool. Travis and I are restoring this table saw for an exhibit at the Museum of Model Aeronautics in Muncie, Indiana. But that's not why I have this saw here today. I wanted to show you how to align and adjust a table saw, and believe it or not, this is just the ticket. Even though it's 90 years old, the table, the fence, and the miter gauge are all aligned just like a modern saw. More to the point, you can see everything. See that? It's all on display. If I were to do this same thing, with my Delta contractor saw, we'd have to strap a hamster to a GoPro just so you could see what I was doing. Hard to train a hamster to be a cameraman. Let's start with the very core of the table saw, the arbor that holds the saw blade. Everything that needs alignment and adjustment on a table saw is aligned and adjusted to this one part. Well, actually, a part of the part. The table, the fence, and the miter gauge are all aligned to the axis of rotation. The axis of rotation is an imaginary line that comes out of the center of the arbor shaft and is parallel to it. The body of the saw blade mounted on the arbor is a perfect 90 degrees to the axis of rotation. Or it would be if the saw blade were perfect, and it's not, but we'll get to that later. To align the table saw, you begin by checking that the miter gauge slots are perfectly parallel to the saw blade. Then, once the table is perfectly aligned, you align the fence parallel to the slots and the miter gauge square to the slots, all of which puts everything in harmony with the axis of rotation. Got all of that? Well, neither do I, which is why I need my notes. But don't worry, we'll go over all of these things one at a time, beginning with the axis of rotation. This is not an easy thing to find for the simple reason that it's an imaginary line. And until someone comes up with an imaginary square, we'll just have to infer it from the rotation of the saw blade. And this too presents a difficulty because all blades have at least a little bit of run out. That is, they wobble as they spin. This wobble is tiny, very tiny, but you need to be aware of it and compensate for it so that it doesn't affect your alignment, even a little bit. Fortunately, even though the saw blade wobbles, the teeth stay where they are in relation to the axis of rotation. If you take a single tooth and track its path as it revolves around the arbor, it describes a plane that is, cross my heart, square to the axis of rotation. So that's just what we're going to do. Pick a tooth, any tooth, and use a felt marker to mark it so that you can easily keep track of it. We're going to measure the distance from this marked tooth to one of the miter gauge slots, and we're going to do it in two locations, in front of the axis of rotation and behind it. If you draw a line through these two points, front and back, that line will be square to the axis of rotation. Consequently, if the distance is the same at each location, then the slot is perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Actually, we don't need the distances so much as we need the differences between the two distances. So I've attached a dial indicator to the miter gauge. 
Let's measure the distance in front of the axis of rotation and behind it. Less than a thousandth of an inch. That's less than three hundredths of a millimeter. Well, that's good enough for government work. We can stamp this sucker aligned. But what if it wasn't? What if there was a big difference between the two distances? Well, this is where you need to reach under the table saw with a wrench and wish you had a trained hamster to do it for you. You see, under each table saw, there are four or more bolts that secure it in position to the arbor. On this particular saw, there are six, three for each trunnion. Note that the holes that go through these fixtures aren't holes at all, they're oblong. The corresponding holes on your saw will either be oblong or oversized. This allows you to adjust the table position just a few degrees in relation to the arbor and get the miter slots square with the axis of rotation. Loosen all the bolts, then snug up one bolt. Not real tight, just snug. This will serve as a pivot while you adjust the table position. Hand tighten the other bolts. Using a dead blow ballot or just the palm of your hand, tap the table in the direction that you want it to go. Make some measurements in the front and back of the axis. If it's still not right, give the table another tap and try again. When you get this where you want it, snug up the bolts, check your measurements, tighten the bolts, check your measurements again. Neither you nor your hamster want to have to do this again anytime soon. You may be wondering, how far does the table have to be off square for it to matter enough to have to do this alignment? And the answer is just a smidge. Using a caliper, mic the width of your saw teeth. Then mic the thickness of the blade. Subtract the thickness of the blade from the width of the saw teeth and divide by two. That's your tolerance. The tolerance on this particular saw blade is one one hundredth of an inch. For these slots to be properly aligned, they have to be within a quarter of a degree of the axis of rotation. As you feed the wood, the saw teeth cut a kerf that is slightly wider than the blade body. If the slots are properly aligned, the wood will never rub on the blade as it cuts. There will always be a slight clearance between the wood and the steel on both sides of the kerf. But if the slots are even slightly misaligned, the clearance will grow wider on one side and narrower on the other as you feed the wood. Eventually, the blade body on one side of the kerf will rub the wood. The friction will cause it to burn, maybe even to kick back. While we've got the dial indicator out, we may as well find the blade run out and mark it right on the blade. In fact, you may want to do this for all the blades that you use regularly. Knowing the run out and having it marked can help make your setups more precise. To do this, you need to find the portion of the blade that wobbles the furthest to the left and that which wobbles furthest to the right. Test the blade body with the dial indicator until you find that spot that travels closest to the indicator. Mark it. Then do the same to find the spot that travels the furthest. This will be pretty easy because these two spots will be exactly opposite each other on the blade. Carefully count the teeth and find the two teeth in between the near and the far spots along the circumference of the blade. Draw a line between these two teeth. When the line is vertical, the blade is going to be as close to true vertical as it's going to get. Now I know this is hard to visualize, so I've made this wooden model of a table saw with a blade that has about 10 degrees of run out. I found the near and far points on the saw and then marked them, then drew a line between them separating the near half of the blade from the far half. By the way, this line is perpendicular to a line that might run between the near spot and the far spot. When you square the blade to the table or you're adjusting the angle with a triangle or inclinometer, Make sure this line is vertical. You can see on the model that if it's anywhere else, you'll get a false reading and your blade won't be truly square to the table or the axis of rotation. The same is true if you're setting the miter gauge off the blade. In this case, you must make sure the line is horizontal. If it isn't, the face of the miter gauge won't be truly square to the slots or parallel to the axis of rotation. With a reliable blade, one that isn't cut out with a bandsaw, we're only talking about a run out of one or two tenths of a degree. So doing this thing with the line will only improve your setup a little bit. However, one of the hallmarks of good craftsmanship is accuracy. So why settle for being close 
when you can be precise. Now that you're certain that the miter gauge slots are perpendicular to the axis of rotation, you can use them to align other things, specifically the fence and the miter gauge. Take a straight edge and wedge it in one of the miter gauge slots up against one side. Mount the fence on the saw and slide it up against the straight edge. Then adjust the fence so it touches the straight edge all along its length. There are many ways that saw manufacturers have thought to do this, but on this particular saw, you simply loosen two bolts on top of the fence. Snug up one bolt to use as a pivot, then rotate the fence a tiny amount to get it where you want it, and snug up the second bolt. Check that the fence is parallel to the slot, and tighten up both bolts. Adjusting the miter gauge is even simpler. Because the slots are now properly aligned, you can be certain that the miter gauge bar is square to the axis of rotation when it's in the slot. Use a square to set the face of the miter gauge square to the bar. If you're making miter cuts, you can also use a protractor in the same manner. Or you can set the angle from the fence as long as the fence is properly adjusted. And from the blade itself with the run out line horizontal. None of this precludes the necessity to make test cuts, by the way. You can check the angles all you want with squares, protractors, triangles, inclinometers, phone apps, the Bureau of Weights and Measures. But the final authority on whether or not your saw is properly aligned and adjusted is the test cut. At this point, you have a variety of stops to set. There are three on your miter gauge, 45 degrees right, 45 degrees left, and dead square. There are usually two associated with your saw table and blade tilt, or on this saw, table tilt. 45 degrees and square. If you have a newer saw with a splitter or a riving knife, you'll want to make sure that this is perfectly parallel to the blade. Do this with the run out line horizontal. The procedures for this differ with brand and model, so check your owner's manual. There is one more important adjustment that I want to address, and that is making the blade insert flush with the surrounding saw table. There are any number of small squares, triangles, inclinometers, height gauges, and other setup tools that you just can't trust unless the insert is dead level with the table. Usually there are four leveling screws under the insert that you can use to adjust both the tilt and the level of the insert. On modern saws, these are Allen screws that you can adjust with the insert in place. But on some older models, including this one, these are slot screws that require you to remove the insert in order to adjust them. I've placed a light behind the straight edge that I'm using to gauge the insert level. This helps me see any gaps. When the line of light is gone, the insert is level with the saw table. This trick is handy whenever you're working with squares, triangles, or straight edges and trying to adjust something. <laughs> good as new, maybe even gooder. But one more thing. We all tend to tolerate tools that are slightly out of adjustment because this takes time and we're busy people. It's like having an annoying relative that you put up with just because he can cut wood. Alignment and adjustment is where you shake hands with your tools, learn the nuts and bolts of how they work, quite literally. And once done, they become good friends that you can enjoy working with. Maybe even good enough to build a couple million of these. <laughs>